We're, we're looking at the end of kind of Paul's missionary journey in Acts chapter 20. This is the end of his third journey, and we're going to be spending some, some time there. But one of the things I just thought was, was interesting is, man, Paul has been doing a lot of traveling. I mean, he, he, he takes these journeys, and we, we today often take missionary like trips. Uh, Pastor Miles is on one right now uh, where he, he's been gone for about 10 days overseas, which, man, even 10 days seems like a long time. Uh, Paul was used to, to several years um, on these missionary journeys. I can, can only imagine because one of the things that I love, just as much as I love taking trips, just as much as I love seeing the world, I love getting back home. Um, I, I'm a big routine guy, and I, I like to, to kind of be in my, my normal and where I know what's going on, what's happening. Uh, but you can imagine that Paul, not, not only was he gone for so long and doing so many things, it was so difficult. It was so difficult. He was beaten almost everywhere he went, ran out of town, imprisoned, attempted to kill him. And we get to this point where he just spent his last uh, over two years in Ephesus. He spent over two years in Ephesus, and, and things went really well there for, for the bulk of that time. And it gets to the point where things aren't, aren't going um, as well anymore, and he has to say some goodbyes. And that's what we're going to focus on this morning, those, those even difficult at times, just kind of even gospel goodbyes. But the, the reoccurring theme throughout all of Acts 20, just kind of his message, all surround uh, really one word, and that is generous. Generous. Uh, generous is, uh, we have kind of even a definition on the sheet there. It's this showing a readiness to give more of something than is strictly necessary or expected. Generous is, is showing a readiness to give more of something than is strictly necessary or expected. Typically, we think of generosity in terms of money. Uh, we think of generous uh, but all the aspects we're going to look at this morning are, are just even well beyond money, even more than that. But generosity is, is hey, giving more than what was ever expected. And you kind of think of it in terms of um, it's, it's not generous, even though we have to give huge percentages of our income to taxes, right? Where, where, depending on where you fall in the tax bracket of 15, 20, 37 percent. It's like, man, I give, you know, over a third of my income to tax. Not me, but there, there are people. It's like, man, you're incredibly generous. And then it's like, that's just what you have to do. Generosity says, no, 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 I'm going to go beyond what I have to do or beyond what would ever be expected of me and give there. And so we're going to be looking at that, that aspect, and, and it's so much more than just money. And that's what we're going to be looking at with, with Paul this morning. And I was thinking about, man, what, what is things I, I would like people to be generous with me with? It's easier to think of that way than things I need to be generous with. But, but some things that I would like people to be generous with me with uh, is, is time. If you've ever tried to move, you want people to be generous with their time or with their trucks or, or whatever that may be. Probably the number one on my list, I want people to be generous with their snacks. Right? Like we go to the movie theaters and, and uh, Michael has a, a, a bag of, of Reese's. Michael doesn't have a bag of Reese's. We have a bag of Reese's, right? Like, like uh, you know, we, we need to be generous. Uh, you know, I'll I show them some of the verses we're, we're dealing with. Um, you know, we want people to be generous with their wisdom. People that have made mistakes that could help me. Like, please share all those things. But there's definitely some things that we don't want people to be generous with. For instance, I do not want you to be generous with your germs, right? Be as stingy as you can be. Keep your germs to yourself. Reality is, uh, the people that aren't close to me, I don't, I, don't, I don't want people to be generous with their problems, issues, or concerns. It's like, yeah, you, you can keep those. I have enough problems. I even think about uh, there's a lot of times I want people to be generous with their opinions, maybe your political stances or, or whatever. It's like, yeah, you can keep those. Um, and just it's, it's fun to, to think about things that we want more than money for people to be generous with to us. And so I, I think we're going to look at this, this foundation with Paul uh, about generosity, what he's calling us to as well. And it really all surrounds on this one verse. It's kind of the end of his gospel goodbyes in Acts 20, verse 35. It says, in all things... I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is one of the, the last things that Paul shared with the church of Ephesus. 
this group of people he spent over two years with. I believe it was his favorite church. And you see in his, Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus, like he just really loved this group of people. And he's saying these goodbyes knowing that he will probably never see them again. There's a good chance that, that he might not even live to ever uh, uh, possibly see them again. And, and so, man, we get to kind of have a glimpse in uh, to some final parting words to some of his favorite people. And foundation, I believe all of them could be filtered with this idea of the, this calling of generosity to give more than that was ever expected of you. So that's how we're going to follow Acts, Acts 20 and, and just kind of look at these different aspects of generosity. Starting in verse 1. It says, after the uproar ceased. Quick, quick note on what the uproar was. While, while Paul was in Ephesus, so many people were, were turning to Jesus and believing in the gospel uh, that it made the uh, sinful activities of the culture not profitable. Right, so there was, there was a lot of magic going on, and there's these mystics and these idols, and, and people made a lot of money selling these different things. Because so many people were believing and trusting in Jesus, uh, they no longer were profitable. That made them very upset, right? It created this huge uproar, and they even brought it before the council, brought it before the city, and the city was like, well, they really haven't done anything wrong, so there's nothing you can do, right? So that, 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 that ushers it into this moment. So after the uproar ceased, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, he said farewell, farewell and departed for Macedonia. When he had gone through those regions and had given them much encouragement, he came to Greece. There he spent three months, and when a plot was made against him by the Jews as he was about to set sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. Uh, and then it continues in, in verses 3 through 12, we're, we're introduced to this, this story. It's, it's almost... Uh, a, a comical story about Paul. He, he's kind of preparing for another long journey. He's eventually going to go hit uh, uh, near Ephesus again and then make his way to Jerusalem. But uh, I, don't, I don't know about you, what you do before going on a long journey. Maybe you have to go through your packing list uh, an extra time. Maybe you try to go to bed early. What Paul did is he said, man, I just want to spend time with the people here. So I want to just soak up every second he's sharing uh, about Jesus with, with friends and with, with uh, different individuals. And he says that he was sharing so long that, that there was a person that was listening, Miletus. And it, Paul began sharing so long and it became so late, nearly midnight, that, that Miletus got a little tired. And he happened to fall out of an upper story window and, and even die when he hit the ground. This crazy story. So can you imagine, I at least gave you a word search uh, if, you, if you get too bored. But, uh, so, so hopefully we won't, won't sleep. But, but man, not, not only did he fall asleep, the only mention of him in the Bible is he fell asleep in a sermon and ended up dead. Well, Paul comes down and he says, you know what? The life is still in this boy. Um, bring him back up. And so they go and they find him and he actually comes back to life, and then Paul goes up and continues until daybreak. <laughs> that wasn't enough warning. He didn't have enough awareness to say, hey, that was enough. He said, and then I'm just going to spend even more time with you guys, investing more with you. Uh, maybe we should eat and spend time together. But it just really kind of comes to this point that I think God's calling us to be generous with encouragement. To be generous with encouragement. We kind of just see in just this, this quick glimpse, even the verses we read and in the story that we, we shared, Paul's in three different places, and the focus of his time in all three places was encouragement. Paul had done so much ministry and so many different things and sharing the gospel in so many different places that he said, hey, one of the most important things I can do to invest in you is to encourage you. The definition that, if you just look it up uh, for encouragement, is be showing a readiness the, or the action of giving someone support, confidence, or hope. The act of giving someone support, confidence, or hope. I think one of the, the things that our neighbors desperately need, that our city desperately needs, that our country desperately needs, 
is some encouragement, some support, confidence, and hope. One of, one of my favorite quotes by Elizabeth Elliot, a woman whose husband was, was killed by the tribe that he was trying to reach with the gospel. She says this, she says, Encouragement is the language of grace. Let your words be filled with love and hope of lifting those around you. Paul realized in the, in the, the, the waning years of his life, after all that he had done and all he had seen the Lord accomplish, he says, hey, man, one of the best things that I could do would be to encourage those around me, to fill them with hope for the future, hope for for God to to work in and through their lives in incredible ways. And one of the things that that we see from from Paul, just kind of three aspects, there's a lot of ways to encourage others, but three just quick ones I want to give you to uh, be encouragement so you could be generous with your encouragement. The first one is just, hey, be there. Paul didn't have to go to, to Macedonia or these other places. He could have just made his way back to Jerusalem, which is where he ultimately needed to go. He didn't have to go to Greece, he said, but no, it's important. It's important that I could spend time with, with uh, other believers, other people of God, just so that I can invest generously encouragement into their lives. That I could just be there. That I could be there when nobody else is there. That's a huge part of encouragement. I mean, I can think of, even as a, as a kid growing up, how, how much of a world of a difference any event or anything that I did, just the, the fact that my parents would show up, how encouraging and impactful that was in my life. The next part, this one's maybe a little bit harder that we uh, maybe tend to do even less, is say it. Actually express encouragement, love, and care, and grace to other people. I know a lot of times we think good things of people. It's like, man, it's really cool what this person did or, or didn't do, and then we just end up keeping it to ourselves. Say it. That's one of the things Paul does with almost every one of his letters. He starts out with just encouraging. Man, I thank the Lord and Jesus Christ for you. When's the last time you just encouraged someone with your words in such a way that displayed hope? So we say, hey, just be there, say it. And lastly, if you really want to be encouraging to others, I pray that we would just actually care for people. That we actually care for people enough to say, hey, I, I want to invest in you. I want to be generous with encouragement. I think that's what we, we see in Paul. Paul so desperately cared for the people that he was investing in uh, that, that encouragement just came natural. It just became a part of who he was and what he did. So that's our first foundation. I pray that we would all be generous with encouragement. Even challenge you today that you could go out of your way to encourage somebody else. Maybe that's sending a text message. Maybe even send a handwritten letter to someone. Maybe you say it to somebody that today. I just, just hope that all of us could, could even practically do this today. Was at least one person would be generous with encouragement. All right, let's continue. Picking up in verse 17, it says, Now from from Miletus he sent to Ephesus. This is Paul. He sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. Right? Rewind. Paul has been kind of bouncing around. He's been fearful for his life. Uh, A lot of things are happening. But he said, hey, before I get back to Jerusalem, i got to see the leaders at Ephesus at least one more time. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know. How I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plot of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance towards God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And he gives this, he gives this starting testimony, right? He says, hey, I got to see the leaders in Ephesus, and here's what I want to say first. He says, you know the last two years that I spent with you. 
I shared everything I possibly know about Jesus. I invested everything that was profitable. Teaching you in public and from house to house, I invested in you. I was completely generous with the word. I was so generous with the word. That's the second point uh, that we have this morning. I believe God's called us to be generous with the, with the word. Earlier, I, I mentioned this, this idea, just even funny, th- things that we don't want people to be generous with. You know, I lean towards not wanting people to be generous with, with their, their in- opinions because opinions can just change. They'd be so different from person to person. And, and, and ultimately... They don't matter a ton. I was recently having a conversation with a person that, that doesn't uh, attend church anymore. And I said, what, what would make you consider going back to church again? And, and the answer was, man, I, I just want to have conversations about difficult subjects without having scripture shoved down my throat. I said, I, I, I hear you. And I don't think the way that we share anything with anyone should never be exemplary of shoving something down someone's throat. However, what's, what's way more important than any opinion I ever have on any subject, if I truly believe the Bible is the living word of God, that it's active, that it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, as 2 Timothy 3.16 says, then on whatever subject we have to talk about, it's the most important thing I could share with you. Because my opinion doesn't matter. My opinion is often wrong. My feelings, I I get it wrong all the time. I'm going to continue to get it wrong. But the Word of God uh, cannot, will not, is not wrong. And it's the most important thing that, that I could be generous with, that I could ever share with anyone else. And I pray that we could be like Paul, where where he says, hey, I did not cease to give you everything that I had about Jesus. That I took every opportunity to point you to him and not to me. But here's the other side of that. Not not only do we have this great calling to to be generous with the word, to to pour out uh, the good news of Jesus with anyone and with everyone in a loving and caring way, But here's the reality is you can't be generous with something you don't have. We can't be generous with something we don't have. One of the things I used to say all the time is that God gave me the the kind of the gift of generosity. He just didn't give me any money. Um, Right? It's it's easy to say, hey, I I, I would be so generous with something something that I don't have or something that's that's not real, like in theory. But but this this is one of those foundations. I believe God's calling us to be generous with the word, but that same calling is to be filled up with it as well. We often talk about Paul and his his missionary journeys. That's what we've been following. But we often don't reflect on the 12 years that Paul spent before he ever stepped foot on mission, being filled up, studying the word of God and and being filled so that he could fill others. We can't give what we don't have. I I pray that, one, we wouldn't just be uh, generous with encouragement, that we would be generous with the word and be generous to fill ourselves up with it. to write it on our hearts, to memorize it, to, to spend time in it daily so that we could live out this calling to be generous with the word. So be generous with encouragement, be generous with the word. Now let's look at verse 22 as we continue in. And now, behold, I'm going to Jerusalem constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and inflictions await me. That's got to be a, like a scary place to be in. Right, where he's saying, hey, the, kind of the, the Spirit of the Lord is just letting me know no, no matter where I go, it's not going to end well. It's going to be real bad. Verse 24 says, but I do not account my life of any value nor as precious to myself if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And that leads us to this last, or or this third aspect, to be generous with your life. 
to be generous with your life. And I think Paul lived this out so beautifully. He said, man, I was never looking for comfort. I was never looking for for what was going to be the easiest path or anything of the sort. I was looking for a way that I could glorify God the most in every situation. I was longing to completely give of myself. But we shouldn't even give that much credit to Paul because all that he was trying to do is live like Jesus. Jesus, the guy that lived a perfect life, didn't make a single mistake. The guy that that still loved me and you so much that even when we were enemies of Jesus, even when we told Jesus that he's wrong, that, that we don't want to follow him, that we want to follow ourselves and we want to figure it out ourselves, even when we did all that, that same Jesus said, hey, I love you so much to leave you in your sin and your mistakes. And he took on the penalty for all of them on himself. He completely gave his life for me and for you so that we could be made right with God. And that's the the example of, of generosity that Jesus set for us and that he's calling us to. That above everything, he's not, not calling us to give. 5% of our life or 10%, he's calling us to give all of our life to him for his honor and for his glory. That we be generous with our entire life and live like Jesus. All right, so that was the first one we had, generous with encouragement, generous with the word, generous with the life. And let's pick up in verse 28. It says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I uh, know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. This is the one, if you had asked me, like, hey, what are the things that you feel like it's calling us to be generous with? This is the one I would not have guessed. But I believe God's calling us to be generous with protection. That's calling us to be generous with protection. He lays this foundation, one of these parting words to the church of Ephesus. He's saying, hey, I'm leaving, and now you have a very real enemy that seeks to steal, kill, and destroy you. Not just you, everyone around you. He says, hey, I want you to be hyper aware to love and care and protect the people that God's put in your place, in your care. R.C. Sproul, he says it this way. He says, Christianity teaches us to be selfless protectors, laying down our lives for others just as Christ laid down his life for us. There's a lot we could speak to to this aspect of of being generous with protection, but one of the things as I was even going through this is is I think all these aspects are are great for every believer and every person, even as as Paul reflected on uh, as somebody that that wasn't a father. He said, man, these are helpful things for, for, for all people, but I just really thought of that, man, for every parent. Man, if we could live these things out, that we'd be generous with encouragement. That we'd be generous with the word, generous with our lives, generous with protection for our kids. Not to be generous with friendship, but to be generous with things that, that matter and that have an impact that would go well beyond them. What a difference we could make. It's my prayer that, that we could live these aspects out as we Transition to to the very last one. In verse 36, it picks up again. It says, And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful most of all, because of the word he had spoken, that they would not see his face again. And they accompanied him to the ship. I can imagine just the weight of that moment. These people that have become family, 
that he spent like two and a half years with. And he says, hey, I'm, I'm never going to see you again. And the last thing he made sure to do, he says, I want to pray with and for you. I pray that we would all be generous with prayer. That we would be generous with prayer. It often blows my mind that, that the God of the universe that loves us fully and completely, the one that spoke everything into existence, the one that, that nothing is too big for, that same God says, hey, ask. Talk to me. Make your concerns known to me. And yet, it's so often neglected. We so often lack the, the, the spirit and the power of God because we lack the conversations with God. One of the most important and helpful things that you could do with any person in your life is to be generous with prayer over them. For them. Of talking to the God of the universe that loves them more than you do. And longing for good things from him for their life. And seeing God move in incredible ways. And so, so this was a lot more points than I'm used to, but I wanted us to just really just get a glimpse in kind of, kind of the in, nearing the end of Paul's life, but really the end of even uh, some of his public ministry that, that we could just live a life like Paul. That we would be generous with encouragement, taking every opportunity to, to instill hope into other people. That we would be generous with the word not only being filled up with it, but then sharing it with anyone and everyone we possibly can. That we would be generous with our lives, generous with protection and seeing others more valuable even than ourselves. And lastly, that we'd be generous with prayer. But here, here's what I want us to do. I, I pray that these wouldn't just be points that we share this morning. I pray that these would be action steps that we take today. Right? Almost everything in this list is something you can do today. Who's someone or three people that you could begin praying for and say, hey, man, I'm going to pray for, for these three people for three minutes a day every day this week. And just wait to see how God works incredibly in and through that. Maybe you say, man, I'm just going to seek to encourage at least one person a day. Maybe you spend one day just trying to encourage yourself. but investing in others. Maybe you could seek to, just whatever possible way to be generous with the Word. Maybe you say, hey, I would long to be generous with the Word. I'm going to start today filling myself up with a goal of reading a chapter a day or for 10 minutes a day or whatever that may be, of just filling yourself with the Word to be able to pour out what is poured in. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to invite us into a time of response. I'm going to pray for us. But, but in this time of response, we just invite you to just uh, allow the Lord to lead you any possible way. Maybe you just want to pray in this time. Maybe you want to sing the song with us. Maybe you want to send an encouraging text. Do you even want to say, I want to get practical right now? We invite you to respond in whatever way you need to respond. Would you pray with me?